Hello everyone, thank you for joining lecture number two. This lecture is about basics of Eigen library usage to perform linear algebra using C++. In our last lecture, we have learned about how to use Eigen library to perform some basic or elementary linear algebra operations. In this lecture, we'll be talking about aliasing problems and how to get around with this problem when we are using Eigen library to perform linear algebra arithmetics. We start with the definition of aliasing and then we'll talk about what are the different situations where aliasing could be helpful and what are the different situations where aliasing may not be helpful and in those cases where aliasing may create problem, how to solve or resolve those problem so that we get the expected result. We'll see all these things in terms of several examples. In the due process, we'll also learn about how to transpose a matrix, how to invert a matrix, and how to create identity matrix, and then what is the eval method, what is in-place methods in available uh, as a built-in function in Eigen library. Now to start with, I'll first describe what is the definition of aliasing in the context of Eigen library. The term aliasing in the context of Eigen library indicates the assignment of a matrix or a vector or an array to itself after some arithmetic operations are done. If not addressed carefully, this aliasing may cause outputting wrong result. So whenever we are performing any kind of linear algebra operations using Eigen library and when after performing those operations if we are assigning those resultant matrix or vectors or the arrays to some of the matrices that occurred on the right hand side of the equality sign. In those cases we need to be careful about the aliasing problem. Aliasing occurs when the ij term interacts with the jia term or some other coefficient terms in the same matrix. And this happens because Eigen library uses lazy evaluation. So when we are performing suppose matrix transpose and assigning it to that matrix itself, while Eigen performs that transpose, it since it's using lazy evaluation, so it takes its ith row jth column element and puts at the jth row ith column dynamically. So when it tries to transpose the jth row ith column again, the number has already changed. And that is why if we are not aware of this kind of problems, which is the aliasing problem indeed, we may get some unexpected result. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about those kind of situations and learn how, what are the right methods to call or what is the right way to perform matrix transpose, matrix matrix multiplications, matrix inverse in appropriate manner. So now that we have some overall idea of what is aliasing and what are the different contexts in, in where aliasing may occur, let's write some code. We'll start with including IO stream, then we include Eigen dense, then we mention the namespace that we will be using, then we start our main function. Okay, 
So the first example that we will be seeing here is in the context uh, aliasing problem in the context of matrix transpose. So suppose we have a matrix transpose and we are saying that the matrix name is M1 which is a 2 by 2 matrix and the element of the M1 matrix are 1, 2, 3 and 4 and let us print out this matrix so that we can see how this M1 matrix look like. And we start checking whether we start checking whether we are able to print the M1 matrix that we just created. Okay, so we'll compile the code and run the executable, and we see that okay, we have created M1 appropriately. Now we'll perform the actual transpose of M1 and assign it to M1 itself. Now in order to transpose M1, we will call the transpose method of M1 and assign it to M1 itself and then we will print out the transposed M1. Now notice that M1 occurred both side of this equality or this assignment and hence there is a potential chance that M1 is experiencing some aliasing. That means ith row jth column of the M1 matrix may interact with the jth row ith column or vice versa. So in those kind of situations aliasing could be a problem and we need to address that. However, when you try to compile this code you may not get any kind of compilation problem at all. However, when you try to run the executable, you get the complaint. And what is this complaint? This, compl uh, this complaint is about the aliasing problem. And it's asking you to perform that aliasing detected during the transposition, use transpose in place, or evaluate RHS into a temporary using dot eval. So it is saying that there is a aliasing problem going on here and in order to address that problem you have two ways to address that. The first one is transpose in place and the second one is using eval methods. So I will first show you the easy way to do it. So I will call M1 and then call the transpose in place method. And then I will try to print the transpose M1 and we see that we get the expected result and there is no runtime error. So we are good here. Another method is that whatever we had before at the end of transpose method calling we call the eval method which will ensure that the complete transposition of M1 first takes place and stored in a temporary matrix and the, after the entire transpose of M1 is over then only we assign that resultant transpose matrix to M1 itself. So there is no interaction dynamically between the different coefficients of the M1. I hope it is clear. So let us compile the code and run the executable to see are we getting the expected result. Yes, we are getting the expected result in this case as well. So we just learned what 
is aliasing in the context of matrix transpose and what are the different ways we can handle that. And this eval method is useful for any kind of methods which may experience this kind of aliasing problem. We will see another example with matrix matrix multiplication. For that we will be creating two matrices. M2 of size 2 by 2 and the coefficients of M2 are suppose 5, 6, 8 and 9. We will also create another matrix which is suppose matrix M3. However, M3 has different size which is M3 is equal to M3 has 3 rows and 2 columns and its elements are 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now suppose we are planning to perform the matrix multiplication between M2 and M3 and M2 because M2, M3 multiplication is not allowed because of the inconsistency in matrix dimension. However, we can always perform M3 times M2. There, there are dimensions allows to perform that kind of matrix multiplication. And then when we try to assign that to M2 itself, in this case, we see that we are multiplying a 3 by 2 matrix with a 2 by 2 matrix. So after multiplication, the resultant matrix will have size 3 by 2. However, when we are assigning that resultant matrix product to M2, M2 initially had size 2 by 2 and now after the multiplication, we get M2 as a 3 by 2 matrix. So in this case, some resizing of M2 is going on. This is a typical example where aliasing takes place. And Eigen library preemptively understands that there is some aliasing going on and it handles that aliasing itself. So in this kind of matrix matrix multiplication, we do not need to worry about aliasing. However, in matrix transpose time, as we have seen before, Eigen does not by default assumes there is aliasing going on. However, in this case, we see that uh, there is, okay, so it's, it's happening because uh, we have not changed the name here, it should be M3. And if we try to run the code again, we need to print M2, sorry. Okay, so we print M2 and we see that we are getting the expected result. So although there is some aliasing going on under the hood, However, Eigen library is taking care of itself. So whenever we perform matrix matrix multiplication, Eigen assumes there is some potential aliasing going on and it handles those aliasing problem itself. So that is good. However, in some cases, there we are sure that there is no aliasing going at all. Suppose we are multiplying M2 and M3. However, we know for sure there is no aliasing going on because the resultant product will be assigned to some other matrix suppose M4. So we first create a matrix, a new matrix M4 suppose and M4 has dimension 
3 by 2 and then what we do is we say m4 is equal to m3 times n2. However, since we are sure about that there is no aliasing going on because m4 is only at the left hand side of this assignment and m4 is not there on the right hand side. So, there is no re resizing going on for m4 r. m4 is only occurred at the left hand side of this assignment. So, we are sure about that there is no aliasing going on. So, if we want for a faster compilation and we also want to save the temporary memories, then we can say no alias to inform Eigen that I am confident that there is no aliasing going on. So, you do not need to assume that there will be aliasing and you do not need to take any preemptive action for that. And if we do that and then try to run the code and print m4 it looks like we are getting some error and Okay, so in this case, what we have done here, we see that M3 gets multiplied with M2. However, M3 has dimension 3 by 2 and M2 has dimension 3 by 2 at this point because we have changed, uh, M2's dimension has changed at line number 24. It was initially 2 by 2 here. However, after matrix multiplication and assigned uh, assignment of M2, uh, of that product to m2 we got m2 as 3 by 2 as well. So, we cannot multiply 3 by 2 matrix with another 3 by 2 matrix. So, this is not consistent. So, what we will do now is instead of multiplying m3 with m2, we will generate another matrix m5 and m5 is suppose another 2 by 2 matrix ok. So, we will change m5 is uh, 2 by 2 matrix and m5 is 1, 2, 3, 4 and then when you try to run this code, we see that it compiles properly and we have not changed the name here for m5 so we got this error let us quickly compile and run ok. So, here in this case we have explicitly mentioned that informed Eigen that there is no aliasing going on you do not need to take any preemptive action for aliasing you do not need to assume that there is any aliasing going on. So, compile it as usual and make the compilation faster you do not need to do this product first and save it in a temporary you do not need to do all these hard work just perform m3 times m5 in lazy evaluation manner and I am sure that the product will not have any kind of aliasing issue because I will be assigning it to some other matrix m4. So, we, we see another example where aliasing uh, could be a could not be a potential problem. On the other hand aliasing does not occur when we perform element wise operation. Suppose we want uh, two matrices to be added 
this matrix additions are done element by element wise. Uh, so in these cases, no ith row jth element is interacting with the jth row ith element of the same matrix. So we are good here in terms of aliasing problem. So in this kind of element by element operations, there is no aliasing. Okay. So we will see one example. So we already have the M3 matrix defined and we want M3 to be multiplied with a scalar 0 0.5 and the resultant matrix will be assigned to M3 back again. So this scalar multiplication is a element by element operation. So although M3 has occurred both sides of this assignment, however, there is no potential threat of aliasing. And we will see that when we compile this code and run it. Okay. So, it compiles and when we run the code, we get that yes, we are getting the expected result and there is no issue with alias. Even when suppose we are working with a matrix suppose M5 and we are adding some identity element with the matrix M5. and assigning it to M5 itself. In this case as well, since the right hand side is uh, element by element operation, we get M5 uh, without any without any ali aliasing issue. So in this case as well, we are good to perform this kind of linear algebra operations without worrying about uh, aliasing problem. So let us quickly run the code and see what is the output. Okay. So we, we have uh, initialized M5 with 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we have added an identity element so that diagonal terms has increased by 1. So we get the diagonal elements as 2 and 5 now. Previously it was uh, 4 and 1 and 4. So yeah, so we have seen here a couple of situations where aliasing may occur, where aliasing could be useful, where aliasing could be detrimental, and where we know aliasing could be detrimental, how we can protect our code to give, give us some unexpected result. So we now have a better idea how to deal with aliasing problems. Now we will see another important thing here, how to perform matrix inverse because we need them uh, many times. So we will create uh, or we do not need to create a new matrix, so we will just um, perform the inverse on M5 matrix. So in order to perform matrix inversion, there are couple of methods available uh, for matrix inversions like dot inverse method, then dot column pseudo inverse Hausdorff QR method. There are many several other methods available. I would recommend you go to the IGEN's website and check what are the different matrix inversion methods that are already there in the Eigen library and use what are useful for you because all those methods has some pros and cons. Some are faster, however, they are slower. Some are slower, but they are much more accurate. Based on your requirement, you decide which method you should, inversion method that you use. However, in this example, I'll be using the 
most obvious one uh, for matrix inversion that is dot inverse method. So we already have the M1 matrix, we'll just need to call M1 dot inverse, okay. And if we do that, we get the matrix M1 gets inverted. So we get the M1 inverse as minus 2, 1.5, 1 and minus 0 0.5. So we now have a pretty good idea how to work with matrix operations, how to perform matrix transposed while taking care of the aliasing problem what are the different ways to avoid aliasing, what are the different situations of aliasing when we are using Eigen library. And we have also learned that there are several ways to perform matrix inversion when we are using Eigen library. There are several methods available and some of the methods has uh, different pros and cons. So we need to choose a matrix inversion method based on our requirement. I have given you an example to use the inverse method. The name is inverse uh, itself. And there are many other ways we can perform the matrix inversion. And there are many built-in functions already there. So I think that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.